Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Understanding Security Frameworks. Thanks for joining us. As everyone is still getting signed in, we'll just go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of questions throughout the session and direct them to the Q&A section. I have a team helping me answering questions throughout the session, but I open up and catch any questions at the end of the webinar as well. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll follow up with you afterwards. This webinar will be recorded and we will share the recording with you shortly after the webinar is finished. Reaching out to info at jamf.com will also get you in touch with someone at Jamf quickly. My name is Aaron Webb and my role here at Jamf is Senior Product Marketing Manager for Security. I'm delighted to be here today to share this session with you as we dive into the topic, Understanding Security Frameworks. The focus of this webinar is to cover the importance of security frameworks in today's digital landscape, the types of security frameworks, their role in mitigating cyber threats and choosing the right one for your organisation. Before we jump into the content of the session, let me give you an overview of what we'll be covering today. For those that might be new to Jamf or those who already know Jamf around management solutions, we will kick off with a quick overview of Jamf and how we have both management and security solutions before moving into an introduction of cybersecurity frameworks, their benefits and usage. We'll then explore compliance best practices for managing your Apple fleet and finally finish up with how you can bring together device management, user identity and endpoint protection. I'll then deliver a brief recap before opening up to Q&A. Before we begin the Security Frameworks content, I want to give you a brief overview about who we are and what we do here at Jamf. Our purpose is to simplify work. We do this by creating enterprise secure solutions that are consumer simple and protect the privacy of your users. More than 72,500 organisations rely on Jamf to manage over 30 million devices. Our recent stats show that some of the industries that we support in the enterprise space. We also help many schools, colleges, universities, hospitals, healthcare providers, and of course, small to medium businesses across the globe succeed with Apple. So how do we do this? We provide solutions that manage and secure Apple at work. Whether that's a school, bank, hospital, hotel, a company of a handful of workers, or a large organization spanning the world. And we are the only company in the world that provides complete management and security for an Apple first environment. Our ability to manage, secure, and extend the Apple experience with deep integrations with Microsoft, Google, Okta, and AWS, as well as many more companies to deliver a complete experience in the workplace, wherever that may be. We have a long history of delivering same day support so you can ensure that you can support your users the day Apple releases new features and security updates so you continue to be productive and secure in your work. And our customers think highly of the products, services and support we continue to provide since we started over 20 years ago. So that's a brief overview of Jamf. Let's get going and look at an introduction of security frameworks, their benefits and usage in your organization. So first, let's define a security framework by answering this simple question. What is a security framework? Well, as defined by secureframe.com, a security framework defines policies and procedures for establishing and maintaining security controls. Frameworks clarify processes used to protect an organization from cybersecurity risks, and they help IT security professionals keep their organization compliant and insulated from cyber threats. But not all, but not all security frameworks are all alike. They can be classified into four categories. Control frameworks, program frameworks, risk frameworks, and compliance frameworks. Let's dive into each to discover more. So let's take a look at control frameworks. Control frameworks include a complete set of network and workstation controls. 
and they are used to create a security team with basic strategy. Identify a baseline set of controls, perform a gap analysis, and prioritize control implementations. An example of a control framework is the NIST 853B. It is a comprehensive framework that includes controls that focus on four baselines. Low impact, moderate impact, high impact, and privacy control. Now, organizations can easily apply the proper controls based on system confidentiality and critical needs. Another example of control framework organizations can choose is the Center for Internet Security's CIS 18 Critical Controls. This is a collection of safeguards that are critical for protecting any organization. Organizations of any size must implement these controls in some way and it's often a stopgap until a more comprehensive control framework is selected. Now this framework, however, may be sufficient for many small businesses and there is no cost to this framework, nor is there for the NIST framework, which makes it a cost-effective approach for all organizations. So let's have a look at program frameworks. Now a program framework is a higher level than a control framework and it helps set up and manage an overall security program. Now program frameworks help organizations perform a security program audit uh, both internal and external, build a security program appropriate for the organization and associated uh, compliance requirements. It helps create metrics for checking for expected outcomes. And it also creates streamlined communication channels between a uh, security team and management. And this is critical for full engagement with data and system owners. So the ISO 27001 is part of a set of the international 27000 series frameworks and best practices. Now the 27001 guides what is required to develop an overall organization security program. Now it includes policies, procedures and processes for governance and ensuring effective security outcomes. The NIST Cybersecurity Framework, or the CSF, is a top-rated solution across multiple industries. And like the ISO 27001, it guides an organization as it defines and works towards information security objectives. Now, however, the ISO 27000 is available at a cost, whereas the uh, CSF is actually available for free. Now, managing security is managing risk, and understanding risk enables organizations to prioritize control implementations and risk frameworks to help establish policies, guidelines, and procedures for assessing and managing cybersecurity risk. Now, a risk framework helps in creating a risk management program, defining risk assessment and management steps, and also assessing risk and prioritizing security activities. Risk assessments help prioritize framework implementation tasks based on threat modeling, existing controls, and target value. The NIST SP830 is a free and comprehensive risk framework, whereas the ISO 27005, which is part of the same series as the ISO 27001, is a popular played framework with many organizations. And finally, let's take a look at compliance frameworks. Now, industries and governments continue to provide standards and guidelines that mandate standards for the protection of personal privacy, financial privacy, critical infrastructure, and stakeholder uh, transparency. Now, these framework categories make it clear that frameworks are not just about implementing the right safeguards. They also include building overall risk management and information security programs. Selecting the right set of frameworks is a process. So let's take a look at some examples. There are three popular compliance frameworks that organizations use to ensure that they can meet certain security and regulation standards. Now, why all these three frameworks aim to improve an organization's security posture? They differ in their approach and focus. The first one is the Center for Internet Security, the CIS controls, and are a set of guidelines designed to help organizations secure their networks and systems. They focus on practical, actionable steps that organizations can take to mitigate common cyber threats. 
The CIS controls are prioritised, meaning that they provide a roadmap for organisations to improve their security posture based on the most pressing risks. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, Cybersecurity Framework is a comprehensive guide to managing cybersecurity risk. Now, the framework is based on five core functions. Identity, protect, detect, respond and recover. Now, the NIST framework emphasises the importance of risk assessment and management, as well as continuous monitoring and improvement. The International Organization for Standardization, ISO 27001, like we've just spoken about in the previous uh, um, categories, is a standard for information security management and systems, so ISMS. It provides a systematic approach to managing sensitive company information so that it remains secure. And this ISO 27001 standard covers a wide range of security controls, including physical security, access control and incident management. Now, in summary, CIS controls provide a practical, prioritised approach to securing networks and systems, while the NIST cybersecurity framework focuses on risk management and continuous improvement. The ISO 27001, on the other hand, is a comprehensive standard for managing information security. Organisations may choose to adopt one or more of these frameworks depending on their specific needs and goals. Now, on top of those, many regulated industries will also be required to implement a security benchmark. For example, a healthcare organisation may be subject to requirements under HIPAA, and a retail or e-commerce company may have systems subject to PS, PCI because they process credit card transactions. Now, schools and colleges need to apply protections for ensuring privacy of the student education records under the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, known as FERPA. Now, depending on the industry, there are many regulations to navigate. Besides the monetary fines and sanctions, what are the benefits of following security frameworks in an organisation? First off, it's about protecting your company's reputation. Security measures ensure that your company is taking the necessary steps to protect sensitive information, such as customer data, from unauthorised access or theft. This can build trust with your customers and stakeholders and protect your company's reputation. Mitigating security risks. Now, frameworks provide guidelines for identifying and mitigating security risks. By implementing these measures, you can reduce the likelihood of a security breach, which can result in costly downtime, data loss, and damage to your brand. Enhancing customer confidence. Now, when customers know that your company is compliant with security regulations, they are more likely to trust your brand and feel confident in doing business with you. Now, this can result in increased customer loyalty and repeat business. Improving operational efficiency. Now, security frameworks involve implementing processes and procedures that can improve your company's operational efficiency. For example, complying with industry-specific security standards may require you to implement better data management processes, which can help streamline your operations and improve productivity. And finally, staying ahead of the competition. Compliance with security frameworks can give your company a competitive edge over other businesses in your industry. By demonstrating your commitment to security, you can differentiate yourself from competitors and attract new customers who prioritise security and privacy when they're looking to take on new business. Whether a business is just starting on its security journey or looking to improve the policies and procedures it has in place, investing in security is a long-term business decision. With security becoming an ever-growing focus for consumers and end users, cybersecurity frameworks can help simplify the transformation and set the organisation up for success. Smaller organisations can usually get by with a single, single carefully selected framework. However, larger organisations might need multiple frameworks to manage information resources comprehensively. This is a careful process that should not be based entirely on recommendations by experts. The selection must depend on due diligence, focused on understanding your organisation's needs and how best to achieve reasonable and appropriate governance, risk management and compliance. 
Therefore, an organization's unique operating environment, compliance needs, and data and system sensitivity all play a part in what set of frameworks is needed. With the different types of security frameworks and their use cases established, let's take a look at how you can apply those frameworks to achieve compliance best practices for managing your Apple fleet. Now, a security baseline is a group of controls that an organization has agreed to configure on their devices. Once these are in place, they need to continuously verify that the controls remain in place and that the devices remain compliant. Now, this compliance scoring system is the security benchmark. For example, an organization might wish to establish one of the following control sets, that all Macs must be encrypted with FileVault or all Macs must turn on the screensaver on no more than five minutes after the last user interaction and authentication will be required to wake up from the screensaver setting. Or all Macs must disable Bluetooth sharing. Now that sounds simple enough, but it also sounds like a lot of work, especially if you have a large number of devices, users who wish to make changes, or a workforce spread all over the world. This is where tools can help you implement the benchmark so that the organization's IT administrator can configure settings of part of their automated enrollment workflow and add a configuration policy to enforce the settings required and to eliminate any user interference or where profiles are not available, they can use compliance scripts to ensure that features such as Bluetooth sharing is indeed disabled. To help ensure compliance is continuously monitored, there are extension attributes to provide insight to quickly ensure that these devices are compliant. All this is possible with an MDM, a mobile device management solution like Jamf Pro, purposely built to simplify Apple at work. An MDM uses the built-in Apple management frameworks in iOS, iPadOS and macOS and tvOS to manage features and settings for each platform. Now the framework ensures that MDM users can import, implement important management features consistently and securely. Now ensure that you select an MDM partner that is known for a same day support so that when the software uh, update drops, you need to know that the tools that you have can support the updates to ensure that your devices are compliant. Which brings me on nicely to software updates. Now it's best practice to ensure that you keep device operating systems up to date. That's your iOS, iPadOS, macOS and tvOS devices. Now when that's not possible, you need to be able to have visibility of those devices and implement policies to defer or force the update depending on the situation. Wherever your route, it's about making sure that you have visibility over your compliance. Regularly updating the operating system, apps, and software on all devices to ensure that they have the latest security patches and bug fixes, and MDM allows you to set up automatic updates on macOS and mobile devices to make this process easier. Now, implementation of encryption is a critical security measure for protecting sensitive data on both macOS and mobile devices. To make sure you enable full disk encryption on devices that require strong passcodes or biometric authentication. You can use FileVault to encrypt the information on your Mac and FileVault encod encodes the data on your startup disk so that unauthorized users can't access your information. And you can also make sure that you have strong password or passcodes depending on the device which are regularly set to change, for example, every 30 days. And make use of biometrics to harden your security of your devices. Endpoint security solutions can add an additional layer of protection to macOS and mobile devices. Now these solutions use advanced threat detection and prevention techniques to safeguard devices against malware, phishing attacks and other cyber threats. For example, endpoint security solutions can use machine learning algorithms to identify and block malicious activity, monitor device behavior for anomalies and block access to known malicious websites. Now, some solutions can even provide real-time alerts and automated response actions to help IT teams quickly respond to security incidents. Now, together, MDM and Endpoint Security Solutions provide a comprehensive protection for macOS and mobile devices, ensuring that organizations can enforce compliance policies and keep their data and network secure. 
By using these technologies, organizations can reduce the risk of data breaches, minimize downtime due to security incidents, and maintain compliance with the relevant regulations. Now, when it comes to mobile devices, you also need to think about your ownership model. You may know that your corporate uh, own devices are compliant, but what about those devices owned by your employees? Well, it's all about the, about the right solution for the right time. There are two ways to enroll personally owned devices with Jamf BYD, for example, account-driven user enrollment and profile-driven user enrollment. Now, account-driven user enrollment is the new workflow, leveraging Apple's framework to provide an improved experience, but asking the user to do something they've done many times before and that's to go into settings app on their device and sign into an account. Profile driven user enrollment is the traditional method where IT sends a user a URL for enrollment into management. Now both of these methods have identical outcomes. It's just a different workflow, but to help your, um, ensure that your Mac and mobile devices are compliant. Also, you need to make sure that you establish secure device baseline configurations. Now, this can be by only allowing authorized applications to run on a device. For example, your organization might not want to allow the use of TikTok on the device. Now, that can be configured with MDM, but you may want to ensure, ensure that you have a layered approach for mobile threat defense solution to calculate a, de a device risk score. This can include jailbroken devices and can be established across your entire mobile fleet and be specific to device types. So if you have an Android in your organization, they can be configured and have risk scores differently to your iOS devices. Now, depending on the industry, you may have deskless workers or remote workers. Now, your traders may be using their personal devices for trading. Well, how do you ensure that these um, are correct applications and that you have an audit trail if this is the way in which they're working? Well, not only can you use tools to create device risk scores, but you can also ensure you can protect user privacy and company data, block cyber attacks like phishing, malicious domains, risky apps, data leaks, and insecure networks, and all of these which help ensure that your devices remain compliant, but keep the end user aware and informed of how to remediate the device and take action. There is also category-based content filtering, the ability to enforce acceptable use policy, and even data capping to prevent your overages and uh, bill shock for those mobile device uh, plans that you may have. So what are the unique considerations that you have to navigate, not only with back and mobile in the workplace, but also the regulated industries? Well, other organizations may not need the highest security possible, but still may want to achieve a custom level security that they can track and enforce. Now let's take a look at some of the tools to help. The Mac OS Security Compliance Project aims to ensure that Apple's operating system macOS is secure and compliant with various security standards and regulations. Now this project involves several key components including security controls, configurations and monitoring. The macOS security compliance project involves implementing various security controls to protect against different types of threats. Now these controls may include firewalls, antivirus software, intrusion detection and prevention systems and access controls. Each control is designed to address a specific security need and reduce the likelihood of a security incident occurring. Now, configurations refer to the settings and options that are configured within the macOS secure, uh, operating system. The macOS security compliance project involves configuring these settings to ensure that the system is secure and compliant with industry standards and regulations. This may include configuring passwords, encryption, network settings, and other security related options. Monitoring is a critical component of the macOS security compliance project, and it involves the continuous monitoring of the system for security events such as an attempted attacks or unauthorized access. Monitoring may involve the use of security information and event management, SIEM systems, log analysis tools, and other monitoring technologies. Now, overall, the key components of the macOS security compliance project are designed to ensure that the operating system is secure and compliant with various security standards and regulations. By implementing security controls, configuring settings and monitoring the system, organizations can reduce the likelihood of security incidents and ensure that they are meeting all their security obligations. 
The macOS Security Compliance Project is an open source effort to provide a pragmatic approach to generating security guidance. The configuration settings are derived from the National Institute of Standards of Technology, Special Publication SP853, and the Security and Privacy Controls for Information Systems and Organizations. Now, it's a joint federal project, and Apple acknowledges that the macOS Security Compliance Project, with information on their security certifications and compliance center page, which brings me on nicely to the JAMP Compliance Editor app, which was built to make this process easier. Now, the JAMP Compliance Editor tool is a tool that provides macOS system administrators with an easy way to establish and manage compliance baseline of their fleet on macOS devices. Now, this tool is built on the foundations of the macOS Security Compliance Project to help easily select benchmarks and baselines for customization, support all variations of benchmarks and baselines currently offered by the macOS Security Compliance Project, support for multiple major macOS versions, modification of organization defined values from the core compliance project specifications, local storage of your custom benchmarks for editing later, an easy to use UI that eliminates the need for complicated scripting, one click guidance creation that includes PDF, Excel, HTML and ad hoc for audit review with options add branding, shell scripts that can audit and remediate endpoint and all configuration profiles needed to be uploaded to the MDM server and Jamf Pro extension attributes that will submit status benchmarks and baselines of Mac OS endpoints. So all of those frameworks that we've discussed earlier on in the session can actually be applied through using the Jamf Compliance Editor tool. You pitch, pick which one that you want to use, it then pumps out the profile for you to upload to your MDM to be able to distribute to your Mac OS devices. Now this is only available for Mac, but there are ways in which you can then start to um, see how you can leverage these and um, think about ones in which you can use for your mobile devices as well. But this is a great tool to really help you select those frameworks and then start to implement on your Apple fleet straight away. Now, fortunately, many compliance standards are fairly prescriptive in providing guidance to organizations. But how can you ensure complete compliance that organizations of all sizes can implement for faster onboarding, application-specific policy enforcement, and a simple streamlined user experience that is consistent for employees, contractors, and third parties alike? Let's take a look at how Jamf helps you approach this. The conversation often starts with a discussion of trade-offs. On the one hand, users want simplicity and privacy, and on the other hand, organizations need to achieve security and compliance. The discussion might sound something like, we need to secure these devices to be compliant, and unfortunately, the user experience may be impacted. Then there's the dirty little secret that despite all the security that you have in place on corporate owned devices, employees can often just choose to do work on their personal devices where things are more simple and their privacy is respected. I'm highlighting the tension between serving your users needs and achieving your security or compliance objectives. Many people believe that there must be a trade-off. At Jamf, we do not believe this trade-off is required but we do believe it requires an honest assessment of the challenges facing the modern workplace. Jamf specializes in helping organizations manage and secure Apple at work, and nobody does it better or more comprehensively. I'd like to show you exactly how we bring together device management and security to create an approach we call trusted access. Trusted access combines and connects the best elements of device management identity and access workflows, as well as endpoint security. All the things we've spoken about in this session today. With trusted access, your employees can be productive on the devices they love while ensuring your organization trusts every user, every device, and every connection made to work resources. Let's briefly explore each of the six elements of trusted access, starting with enrolled devices. Enrolled devices are a critical foundation for achieving trusted access. We must have visibility into every device being used for work. Now, Apple Business Manager ensures that there are two unique approaches to workflows that every organization should embrace. For corporate owned devices, automated enrollment ensures that every device enrolls automatically from the first time it's turned on. IT has full control over the endpoints for the entire life cycle of the device. 
For BYOD devices, account-driven user enrollment allows employees to initiate privacy-protecting BYOD enrollment on their personal devices. With user enrollment, IT remains con in control over all company data on these devices without having any visibility into or control over personal information like messages, photos or app. In either case, enrollment is built into all Apple devices, which eliminates risk associated with insecure enrollment URLs and invitations. Verifying each user's identity is another critical element of trusted access. Janth integrates with every major cloud identity provider to provision local accounts with the user's cloud identity, creating a streamlined onboarding experience. Jamf also ensures that users' privacy passwords stay in sync with their cloud identity, minimizing IT tickets and employee downtime. Having the user's cloud identity bound to their device is important because you're able to utilize your existing cloud identity investment to map access and rights management all the way down to the user's local account. We also want to ensure that every endpoint being used for work is protected. Now, Jamf makes it easy to audit device security benchmarks to ensure that trusted user on an enrolled device isn't out of compliance with your required security settings. Additionally, Jamf consistently monitors endpoints for threats to automatically block and quarantine malware, keeping your endpoints protected and your data safe. The modern threat landscape is vast and the risks span far beyond insecure configurations on malware. Jamf provides device-wide protection against phishing, malicious domains, ransomware, and other web-based threats that pose a risk to your organization's data and compromises user privacy. We also provide simple security awareness notifications through the Jamf Trust app to help your users learn how to work smarter and safer. As I mentioned earlier, users are working from anywhere and from any kind of device. Now, Jamf offers zero trust access to work resources with continuous device security monitoring, which adjusts access in real time if there is a risk on the device is identified. Now, it works in any ownership model to provide seamless experience that's always on and never in the way, establishing secure connections regardless of where users are working. Now, in an ideal world, nothing would go wrong, but when reality hits, it's important to have a robust set of automation and remediation options available when it's time to respond to a security incident. Perhaps you need to spend, suspend a user's access, update an operating system, or update a vulnerable app. Maybe it's important to notify the user. The task will vary depending on the nature of the issue, but the important thing to understand is that Jamf offers a robust device management foundation that allows organizations to resolve any number of different issues with powerful automation tools. So that's a quick overview of trusted access. And while many organizations have some of these individual solutions today, I hope this shows you why we believe it's critical that these solutions be built to work together to secure the workplace from the threats that we have identified, not only today, but in the future as well. If you'd like to learn more, check out jamf.com. So let's recap on what we've covered today. After covering Jamf with a quick overview, we looked at the types of security frameworks, the benefits and their usage. This was followed by compliance best practices, including device management and endpoint protection. And finally, we finished up with an overview of Jamf's trusted access journey, bringing together device management, user identity and endpoint protection. To wrap up, we recently hosted Jamf's very own CISO, Aaron Camille, to the Jamf Security Lounge. Now, if you missed it, don't worry, you can catch the episode on demand and see more from the interview with Aaron and myself as we dive into the life of a CISO, including insights into choosing a security framework and how to get started in your organization. Now, the QR code link is on the screen uh, now, so if you wanna watch the recording and also check out the other sessions from the Jamf Security Lounge, Stay tuned for future sessions. That's it for this session. I hope you found this insightful and learned some useful information that can help you with choosing a security framework for your organization.